As you are watching this, Monmouth Mall has since closed and is being demolished to make way for progress. So as we turn the page, let's look back at what once was one more time. Monmouth Mall actually goes back quite a ways, originally known as the Monmouth Shopping Center when it first opened on March 1st, 1960. It would have been a humble outdoor mall with Bamberger's and their tire shop, Franklin Simon, Food Fair, SS Kresge, AS Beck Shoes, Chandler Shoes, Lerner, Milmar, and Reed's. And that was just what you could shop at after witnessing the balloon barrage on the grand opening. Montgomery Ward was expected to open its largest store on East Coast in mid-May, and more smaller stores and services were expected leading up to that month. It was expected to employ upwards of 2,000 people. The mall wouldn't be fully enclosed until August 18th, 1975, and as it was enclosed, its footprint would practically be doubled as it became the Monmouth Mall. New tenants would be found, and while Montgomery Ward left the mall, Alexander's department store would take its place, while Hani's would open ahead of the new mall, with J.C. Penney and Abraham Strauss arriving later. And this would be the layout we're all familiar with today with the original footprint being a single floor and being an intermediate point between the two floors of the new space. And in 1978, it was reported that the mall was bustling, not only being one of the largest shopping centers in the world, but also generating well over $100 million in sales, despite a county law banning sales on Sunday, which the mall tenants were protesting at the time. Alexander's would close in 1983, citing traffic flow as the issue. The company and clerks alike stated that customers would either only come to the store and go, or they would go into the mall using the store as a pass-through without buying anything. When Alexander's closed up, Caldor would come in to take its place in 1986, and in 1987, a renovation was carried out on the mall to update its image with new, more modern fixtures, while also removing many of the fixed planners and an entrance in the old wing. When I had arrived here, the single floor portion seemed like it was doing relatively okay, even for this being the mall walker's hour, which usually makes things look a little worse than usual. When I went down to the second floor portion, uh, you can see it it's like stepping into a different mall entirely. Where did all the tenants go? Ah, here they are. Well, here they were. As time marched on, Macy's, the parent company of Bambergers, would eliminate the Bambergers nameplate and take their place in 1987. Enter 1990 and Hani's would be replaced by Lord and & Taylor. 
Abraham and Strauss would be replaced by Stearns in 1995, before being replaced by the superior Boskovs in 2001. As Kaldors fell off, their space would be replaced by Old Navy. But over the mid-90s, another renovation would be carried out to bring in a new elevator for the multi-floor section, a large 15-screen movie theater, The Wiz, and even a food court originally themed after the Jersey Shore. I hope it wasn't the TV show. Enter 2009, and the mall would be overhauled yet again, bringing us to the look that we have today once it was completed in 2011. And I am underwhelmed by it. It's like someone took a page out of Simon and threw buckets of bleach all over the mall. Well, the food court at least still has a decent look. In 2010, Planet Fitness would open a gym at the mall. This is where the mall began to stagnate and like many others would start to decline. Monmouth Mall would see many owners in its time. While I haven't the specifics on who and when before 2015, when Kushner Companies would purchase partial ownership of the mall from Vornado Realty for the low, low price of $38 million, and Kushner Companies would announce a massive redevelopment plan to turn it into a pedestrian-friendly live-work-play center. And I'm already disinterested in it. The beginning of 2019 would see Lord and Taylor close their doors for the last time, becoming home to the occasional pop-up, which included a closeout center operated by Crate and Barrel at one point. 2021 would see Brookfield sell their share of the mall, giving full ownership to Kushner Properties. 2022 would see JC Penney cease operations, and this would leave just Boscovs and Macy's at the mall. And during all this time, there would be a near constant exodus of inline tenants. Forever 21 was an apparent holdout at the mall, but even they would close at the end of 2023. And as of September 2024, the mall is finally closed and is expected to come down any day to be replaced with something else entirely. Looks like the book has closed on this mall. I've said my piece already on the overall look of this mall. The modern, almost all-white look doesn't do very much for me. Though it is interesting to see a modern mall in such a state. The single floor portion at least had some signs of life when I was here, but the two floor portion, it, it just feels empty. But I guess none of that matters now, as this mall's existence comes to an end. At least I got to see it and at least the land is being put to use for something else. It's just that the replacement its not really my thing. But then again, I'm not the target demographic for any of this.
In the end, I am a bit mixed to see this place go. I still go to the mall on occasion. Gets me out of the house. But enough from me. What are your thoughts about the Monmouth Mall? Are you going to miss it? Or are you happy to see it go? Do share in the comments below. Until next time, Eaton Town, this is Doomy Grunt wishing you and the Monmouth Mall farewell.